Then I got another question about basic jewelry designs. If you will go onto our website, look at the Carla cams, look at different designs that we have online to get some ideas of how you might make your your own design, maybe not exactly like it, but let us give you some ideas, some inspiration. That's all you need is just a little inspiration. Uh, the other question I had several people ask me about was what I was particularly doing right now. What did I find uh, enjoyable? What was the new thing? And I'm going to give you two quickly, two things, and then I'm going to introduce Carla to give you some tips. Um, I'm a gluer. I'm afraid I am. I glue. I love to embellish my pendants like I did this cross with the Swarovski flat back. I have another one that I did. Swarovski flat back. We just got in this two-part epoxy and it is fantastic. You are not going to lose your stones off of your uh, beads, off of your, off of your pendants. They look beautiful and it just adds some bling. The next thing I want to tell you about Oh, it's the most fun product that we have had in forever. It is Elastoma. And it is this incredible, strong, stretchy elastic that you actually crimp. Carla is going to do Carla Cam on it next week because there is a certain amount of finesse in it. But when I first saw this demonstrated in Tucson, I thought of my cousin, Vicki, who has MS and she also has rheumatoid arthritis. And she can't wear jewelry unless someone is there to put it on for her. She can do this. Put it on right over her head. No problem. So those are the two things I'm going crazy about right now. Now we're going to have Carla come in, and there were a couple of questions that I wanted her to demonstrate. So thank you so much. I promise we'll do it again, and I look forward to talking to you real soon. One of Susie's questions that she received was from Tammy, and her question was, how do you close a jump ring so that it is tight and not bend it? Well, I did do a video on how to use jump rings and split rings, but I am going to show you again how to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to open and close a jump ring. You will need two pairs of pliers. I'm using a bent nose and a chain nose pair. And what you do is you grasp each side of the jump ring and you hold one in place and you move the jump ring forward. You don't want to pull it apart. And then to close it, you simply move it back and you, you will hear a little click. And you want to bring it back just a little further and then back again. And that's how you open and close a jump ring. One more question that Susie received was from Nancy in Georgia, and she asked how she keeps the wire from sticking out after she's made a wrapped loop. She's able to make a wrapped loop, but she has a little trouble here at the end. And so one of the problems I think may be happening is that maybe she, you're not cutting it close enough, so you want to cut it as close as the wrap is possible. And then something that I like to do is I either use the crimp tool or a pair of chain nose pliers to tuck this tail into the wrap. So I'm going to show you using the crimp tool, what you do is you just kind of crunch it in there. And if you don't like using the crimp tool, and that's the only reason I use the crimp tool, you may also do the same thing with the chain nose pliers. But the good thing about the crimp tool is that that loop, that little hole in the tool right there fits right around your wrapped loop and it presses the wire into the bead.